And there he is, Cody Wall, joining his segment here on this edition of Coffee with Graham on this Monday night. This uh, edition of the segment being used on this Tuesday morning episode, Off the Wall with Cody with ASTV Productions, color commentator Cody Wall. And uh, Cody, you know, it was supposed to be a huge weekend for us here on the network once again, but due to the storm, uh, we weren't able to, to get out to many games where we were uh, our manitoba crew was only able to get out to one you weren't even there and you were uh in the process of moving gotta ask you how, how the move went this week and how things went in that department yeah the move went pretty good uh so far uh not a lot of you know didn't really damage anything do during the move so that's always a plus uh when you don't have to do too many repairs to the walls yeah no, no doubt about it. Always good to, you know, not not damage things. Uh, great that, uh, you know, it went well in that department. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, you actually didn't even miss much. Uh, as I said, we were only able to get out to one game. Our crew here in Manitoba, our broadcast crew, uh, you know, uh, due to the snowstorm, due to the weather, due to the road conditions, we weren't able, even able to get out to Pilot Mound. And uh, Glenn Munford, our boss, the owner of ASTV Productions, said that was the first time it ever happened. So that's uh, it was a first for everything, I guess. But let's uh, break down the games anyways. We'll try our best here. Uh, starting off last Wednesday, uh, talking about the Swift Current Wildcats and the Regina Rebels. Uh, Regina coming into that game as the first place team in the league, uh, and the Wildcats had great success against them coming in, two wins against them this season, uh, both of them coming in OT in another close game, Cody. Four to three, this time not being an OT, a regulation win for the Swift Current Wildcats, for Swift Current being able to get a huge win again against the Regina Rebels, uh, you know, led into them having a uh, somewhat successful weekend as well against Battlefords, you know, talk about, uh, the uh, game, the four to three win for the Wildcats, you know, from what you saw from the stat sheet on in that game. Yeah, definitely a, a solid performance by the Wildcats, uh, you know, edging out the win uh, with a solid second period, uh, outscoring their opponents two to one in that period. Uh, you know, that was definitely the period where they kind of took charge. Uh, shots, they were uh, a little bit behind uh, the Rebels trailing 29 to 22 but uh, still managed to uh close out the win in that uh wednesday night uh wednesday night game yeah and aurora van warmer goaltender for the swift current wildcats uh returning to the team after her uh, experience at the western regional uh women's u18 championships here in portugal prairie uh, for her to come in and have that type of game stop in 26 uh, shots on uh, 26 shots on 29 shots against uh, having 26 saves. Just uh, how huge was that for her confidence here getting a, a huge win against a team like Regina? Yeah, and like you mentioned, she probably got a lot of momentum off of uh, you know that that Portage uh, tournament that she was in or part of. Uh, you know, when you're selected to those kind of uh, camps and teams and selected, uh, always kind of makes you feel like you're, uh, gives you a confidence boost. And uh, I'm sure Aurora took uh, that notoriety that she got for being invited and uh, was able to kind of uh, help her team use that momentum to uh, will out the win on Wednesday. You know, talking about special teams now, uh, for both of these teams, Regina and the Wildcats, they were both two for four on the power play. Just talking about uh, how huge those power play chances were for, for both teams in that game to be able to capitalize on the power play when they did have chances. Yeah, uh, well, for a swift current, 50% of their goals came on the power play, and uh, for the Rebels, over 50%. So, you know, just looking at those stats quickly, uh, you can see that the power play for both teams had a pretty big uh, part in the game. Uh, and with Swift Current managing to get that, uh, the two right uh, even strength goals rather than just the, the one additional that the Rebel, Rebels got. Now for uh, Swift Current, it's uh, been a lot of success against the Rebels so far this season. Um, 
you know, the only three losses that the Rebels have had have come against Swift Current. Just talking about how Swift Current has been able to match up with this Rebels team so well and been able to, to beat them every single time, uh, even though they've been closed games. Yeah, just uh, sometimes when you're going up against uh, an opponent that's higher than you in the standings, uh, you get a little extra momentum uh, going into those games. You know it's going to be a hard-fought battle uh, going into those games, and you kind of know what you're going to be expecting, so uh, you can go into that game with a, an expectation that you need to give it your all uh, to be able to pull out a win, and that's something that uh, Swift Current has been able to do is just show up every game against the Rebels and uh, – put forth a good uh good effort now looking at swift current uh the scoring in their game in that game for them uh four different goal scores in that game number four jersey retain uh, number seven sadie keller uh number 10 tests uh bacchus and number 12 ava metzger uh, all getting on the board with goals in that game uh how huge is that for a team when they're able to not only have their top players scoring, but able to, to get depth in a game like that against a team like the Rebels? Well, you definitely want uh, to be able to spread out your scoring. Uh, but at the same time, you do want your, your top guns going all the time. Uh, but definitely when you get some depth scoring and uh, more than just one or two people uh contributing to the offense you know it's evil even easier to distribute ice time uh when you have everybody kind of going on all cylinders uh during those games now looking at the rebels uh their goal scorer the the player that got all the goals for them in that game has been one of the top players in the league this season alexis pletford uh, a hat trick in that game, uh, a hat trick coming in the loss, but for uh, the Rebels to have a player like her step up in a game like that against a team that has the, the qualities that Swift Kern has, uh, must have been very pleased with the performance they had from Alexis Pletford as she was also returning to the lineup uh, after playing in that U18 championship tournament. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I mentioned, you, you want your top stars going, and uh, for the Rebels, Alexis Pletford, uh, definitely was firing all cylinders on that Wednesday night game. Uh, like you said, getting those three goals for her team and really keeping uh, them in it. And uh, just kind of alluding back to the power play uh, with two power play goals and both uh, coming from Alexis uh, for the Rebels. You know, she's going to be, uh, she's somebody they definitely depend on on the power play and somebody who's going to be uh, constantly getting the puck uh, for her team when it does come to the power play. Now, looking at it, uh, this Rebels team out shooting the Wildcats in this game, 29 to 22, um, you know, obviously not getting the result they wanted with the win, but, you know, why this Rebels team, in your opinion, from what we've seen from the results, uh, have not been able to get over that hump to, to beating this what current Wildcats team yet this season when they played them? Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about how Swift Current, uh, all their offense was coming from multiple lines. And, uh, you know, that's that's something that I'm sure the Rebels are going to want is to have some of that depth scoring and not depend so heavily on their star players. Uh, and, and, yeah, kind of spread the ice time out when you do have uh, multiple players going on or that are hot, you know, you can spread out that ice time and kind of have uh, three, four lines that are just going at full capacity. We'll move into uh, Thursday's game now, the game on Remembrance Day that was played here on the network between the U-17 male prep Buffaloes from Pilot Mount Hockey Academy uh, taking down the Brandon Wheat Kings U-17 Triple A team 4 to nothing. Uh, of course, you were there to commentate that game, Cody, the only game you were able to, to get to this past week slash weekend. Uh, you know, a huge 4 to nothing win for uh, the Buffaloes in that game, continuing the success they had had the weekend before when they had a successful U-17 CSSHL showcase performance. Uh, just from what you saw in that game, how the Buffaloes were able to take advantage of the weekends and come out and not only get a win, but a shutout win as well. Yeah, they definitely looked like they came out firing in all cylinders. And uh, they were led by uh, goaltender Miles Gordon in that uh, affair. And he was able to uh, shut the door and uh, get his team to win as well as uh, there were some 
great performances by Keegan Leach, uh, Carlos De Leon, and as always, you know, uh, some solid performances by Laz Constant with some physical play uh, from Izzy Amy. Just a, a good all-around effort uh, from the whole Buffalo team. Now, talking about it, uh, the goal scorers for this Buffalo's team in that game, Sam Takahashi with two goals, Laz Constant and uh, Keegan Leach with the other goals in that game. Uh, just talk about the performances uh, from guys like Sam Takahashi more in depth as well into uh, Laz Constant and Keegan Leach out there this past Thursday. Yeah, just to start with, Ke- uh, sorry, Sam Takahashi, you know, he's always given her 110%. Uh, he's always finding his way into uh, the dirty areas. You know, he, he doesn't play uh, a soft game. He doesn't throw uh, the body too terribly much, but he definitely doesn't shy away and is able to get into the greasy areas and uh, is able to make plays and generate offense. Yeah, and uh, you talked about how uh, Laz Constant was a standout as well as Keegan Leach. Talk about what they did so well in this game to not only be able to, to generate and score those goals that they did, but just their overall game in, in those um, in that win on uh, last Thursday on Remembrance Day. Yeah, uh, the Buffalo definitely, they'd, it was a physical game on Thursday on that Remembrance Day. Uh, but one thing I really liked was the Buffaloes able, were able to uh, kind of separate themselves after the whistle a bit. Uh, there wasn't too many after the whistle uh, penalties. And uh, it did seem like once penalty was coming to the Wheat Kings, uh, the, the Buffalo were able to kind of reel it back and, and pull back on the reins and, with that kind of intensity and not uh, engage and even up uh, the penalties and get coincidentals. Uh, they were able to uh, draw penalties and get onto the power play, which is something that they, uh, even if they don't score every time when they're on the power play, that is something that is a strong point of theirs. They're able to generate a lot of momentum. Uh, and just to bring it back to uh, Laz Constant, that's a guy who went on the power play. They depend on a lot. Uh, he's able to hold the puck on the half wall and is able to go into the corners when uh, a puck is in the corner and is able to often uh, come out with it uh, more times than not. And then uh, Keegan Leach, you know, he looked good on that Thursday night or Thursday game. Uh, he was able to, from the back end, like usual, he was able to quarterback uh, the play, able to make good, clean, crisp uh, passes for the breakout. And often didn't find himself uh, hemmed in his own end. Now, uh, dive more into the, the special teams, the, the power play. How that looked for the Buffaloes, as well as their penalty kill when they did get down a man. Yeah, their power play, uh, they were definitely cycling it well. Able to, uh, They managed to get a four-minute power play. Were, uh, weren't able to capitalize on that one, but uh, was definitely able to generate a lot of momentum, which kind of let them put a bit of a stranglehold on the game and uh, just kind of roll with uh, the momentum as it came. And uh, what about for just the, the penalty kill that they had out there to, to be able to, to neutralize this uh, special teams, this power play from the uh, Brandon Weekings U17 Triple H team? Yeah, they definitely had a lot of active sticks. Uh, we're getting in the lanes blocking uh, passes and really making it hard on the Wheat Kings to really generate a whole lot of offense. And uh, that was something definitely uh, they were probably able to take some momentum out of that as well uh, by having a, such a strong penalty kill. Now, uh, you know, uh, the defensive zone for this U17 team is something that uh, I found and we've really found as a broadcast crew that's been really uh, making a lot of improvements as the season has gone along. How did that defensive zone coverage, that defensive zone play look from the Buffaloes in that Thursday uh, exhibition for to nothing win over the Wheat Kings? Yeah, they definitely looked like they took strides. Uh, they weren't... Uh, panicking in the defensive zone when it did when uh the weak kings were able to uh generate some offense they were able to kind of settle down and uh, pick their spots where they were able to jump on a loose puck and able to get it going the other way 
Now, there was a new player that was in action for this Buffalo's team. Number two, Dimitri uh, Petrenko, uh, forward for the Buffalo's. Just uh, to get a first look at him, how do you look in that game? What uh, strengths he showed out there in that exhibition game on Thursday, last Thursday? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Buffaloes looked like they were maybe easing him in a little bit. It uh, didn't look like he was getting uh, as much ice time as some of the other guys, but maybe just due to uh, being his first game, uh, never hadn't heard of the the young man before Thursday's game, so I believe it was his first game with the team. Uh, maybe a little feeling out process with the coaches to see where he fits. And uh, But he didn't look bad uh, when he was out there. He was, uh, he was going to the dirty areas. He was taking, uh, he was taking the, not taking the body, sorry. Uh, he was, you know, going to the corners and taking a hit uh, to try and make plays. And he was able to throw the body a bit himself. He wasn't, uh, no, uh, running around, uh, throwing hit, big hits, but he was uh, finishing his checks when uh, it did call for uh, him to finish his checks on his man. Now, uh, moving over to the Wheat Kings, uh, we won't touch on them as much because uh, obviously losing four to nothing. But from what you saw from this Wheat Kings team, uh, what they you know showed that was good out there, what they struggled at as well out there in that game to lose it four to nothing. At times, they did show uh, why they are one of the top teams in that uh, Winnipeg AAA U17 league. Uh, but there was times where it seemed like uh, they let their tempers get the best of them. Uh, there was times where uh, some of their players would kind of disengage from the play and look for the the Buffalo player that had thrown a hit where they weren't expecting. And kind of uh, getting into penalty trouble definitely, I think, was uh, part of their downfall in that game. You know, uh, talking about, you know, some of the things that they did well, in that game, uh, you know, some of the chances that they had there uh, when they were in the offensive zone, as well as uh, talking about their, their defensive zone play as well, you know, some things that they might have, uh, you know, shown really well in that game at points. Yeah, they definitely had some active sticks as well, uh, trying to break up some of the plays. Uh, but uh, it did seem like they maybe struggled at times to get out of their own end. Uh, but when... When able to get into the offensive zone, they definitely weren't shy, uh, like I said, to throw the body, uh, especially once tension started to get a, started to get a little bit higher. Uh, you could definitely see that they were really trying to engage in the physical game and try and uh, intimidate the Buffaloes. But uh, unfortunately, that didn't look like that was something that uh, was going to work in that game, uh, was that intimidation factor. Touch on their uh, special teams real quick when they were up a man on the power play as well as on the penalty kill in that game. Yeah, on the penalty kill, uh, they did struggle a little bit uh, with Pilot Mountain getting uh, some power play time and generating some some power play shots and offense off the power play, but uh, or off the off the Buffalo uh, power play. Sorry, uh, but their penalty kill. Sorry, when uh, they were on the power play, uh, they definitely were able to generate some offense, uh, get some good shots on Miles Gordon there, and uh, and test him when they were able to get the man advantage. Now, uh, looking at it, one more thing before we go to uh, commercial break here, just talking about uh, the goaltending that was uh, displayed for them, that was shown out there in that game, the, the goaltender that played for the League Kings against the Buffalo, how he looked in that game. Yeah, he definitely looked like he was uh, battling all game. Uh, you know, he didn't look like he really gave up on any of the any of the the goals. Uh, he didn't really look distraught uh, as you know the pilot mount offense kind of uh, gained momentum and was able to uh, pressure him. He he looked like he stood tall and was able to uh, turn away uh, a majority of the shots that he faced. Uh, just with the the four uh, getting by them there, and a couple of them were really just uh, some shots through traffic stuff that he couldn't. Uh, a couple of them that he couldn't really uh, do much about, but uh, you know they they still look the same on the scoreboard. 
while Cody, we're going to take our first commercial break in this edition of your segment off the wall with Cody on Coffee with Graham. When we're when we come back here on this edition of Cody's segment, we're going to talk about uh, the Saturday and Sunday games that were played. Uh, some of the games that you guys didn't see here on the network, and we're going to try to break those down the best that we can for you guys. Well, Cody's going to try the best to try his best to break them down for you guys on this edition of Off the Wall with Cody on Coffee with Graham with Cody Wall. Stick around for more after this commercial break. Welcome back to Off the Wall with Cody here on Coffee with Graham with Cody Wall. We uh, started off by breaking down the Wednesday and Thursday matchups that we saw last week on the network. Now we're going to move into the weekend action here, Cody. Uh, talking about, you know, uh, uh, Paul Mellon Hockey Academy, Buffalo's U15 male prep team. Of course, uh, we weren't able to broadcast those games due to the snowstorm, but uh, the Buffalo starting off there weekend with a 4-3 win over Prairie Hockey Academy to be able to come out and beat this team after dropping their last matchup against them in the past weekend, um, the, the weekend before, 11-3, uh, to three, to come back, show that resiliency and get a win against them have to be huge for the Buffalo's confidence to, you know, be able to be resilient once again and be able to come out and beat this team. Yeah, that seems like something uh, we really talk about every time we talk about the, any of the Buffalo's teams is their res- resiliency, and uh, definitely was something that was displayed on Saturday, able to uh, come back after a bit of a, a hard performance uh, to Prairie in the prior uh, prior games, with uh, coming out with a four to three win uh, on Saturday. Definitely something uh, they will have been really pumped for uh you know when anytime you can beat a team uh that had kind of uh for lack of a better word maybe had their way with you uh you definitely uh cherish those wins a, a little bit more yeah and uh keen reed a huge reason why this team was able to win stopping 42 shots on 45 uh shots against uh, 42 saves for him in that game just to, to be able to build off of, you know, the, the strong game he's had this season. How huge was that for the Buffaloes to be able to get a, another huge performance out of their goaltender? Definitely when uh, when your goaltender's facing a lot of shots and he's, uh, you know, for lack for, you know, he's hot. You know, he's when he's stopping everything, uh, you know, there's lots of ways you can gain momentum in the game of hockey. And uh, when your goalie's making key saves uh, and making a lot of key saves, you know, that uh, can definitely help the offense uh, get a little more momentum. Uh, Guys, you know, rally behind their goaltender when you see performances like that and uh, kind of play for uh, their, their brothers in arms when it comes to comes to that. Well, a huge uh, bonus for the Buffaloes was getting uh, Bo Murray back, their captain. He had a goal and an assist in that game. Uh, just to, to have a player like Bo back, a player that has been able to get it done in all areas of the game on the ice, uh, his performance, how huge that was for the Buffaloes in that game for them to be able to get that one. Yeah, Bo Murray is definitely uh, you know one of the uh, premier offensive threats for the U15 Buffalo. Uh, So anytime he's missing, you know, he's a big uh, omission from the lineup. But with him playing, uh, you know, a goal and assist, like you said, uh, is huge to to kick your team uh, into gear and get them to, you know, that next level, able to to will them to a win is uh, definitely something uh, that, you know, the coaches – will be looking to lean on him going forward uh, with key performances like that. 
And, you know, even though we weren't able to watch this game, uh, we're, we're just going to talk more about, you know, players that, that really stood out. Uh, talking about Gage Sutherland and Carson Carroll's uh, Gage Sutherland in this game defenseman having a goal and then Carson Carroll's having two assists. Uh, we know how good these guys are. We've talked about it this season. For them to have big performances by putting up points in that game, uh, how huge it was for this Buffalo's team for them to generate points from the back end, their uh, translation in their, their good uh, play into scoring chances and um, them to, to get on the board and getting points in this game. Yeah, those three uh, that you just mentioned, Bo Murray, Gabe Sutherland, and Carson Carrolls, uh, those three captain uh, and the two assistant captains, you know, those are the guys that uh, night in and night out, uh, the U15 Buffalo are going to be depending on for offense. And uh, they didn't let their team down in that performance with uh, displaying some of their offensive abilities. And, uh, you know, uh, on top of that, uh, Gage and Carson both are so smooth at skating and uh, able to make a good first pass to, to get their, their team uh, wound up and able to uh, get a good clean breakout to, to go forward to their opponents. Now, uh, talking about it, you know, obviously for Perry, them getting a lot of shots in this game, uh, not not being able to, you know, uh, exactly, you know, uh, capitalize on all of their chances. Uh, 42 shots against Ackley, it was uh, 39 saves for Keen Reed in that game. I'm just looking at it now. But just, uh, you know, where it might have went wrong for Perry in this game to, you know, even though they got a lot of shots, a lot of chances on net for them not to, to capitalize enough to get this one. Yeah, sometimes it's a little frustrating when uh, you're throwing everything, including the kitchen sink at the goaltender and, you know, he's blocking and he's just having a, a good night. Uh, you know, anytime you can put up almost 40 shots, you know, offensively, uh, you were, for the most part, clicking in all cylinders, just not able to uh, finish off some of those attempts. Uh, I'd say they probably uh, didn't get too down on themselves because, you know, there's positives that they were able to generate, uh, just not able to uh, finish it off. Uh, and that's something that they were able to do uh, once it came to Sunday, uh, potting six goals in that affair. Yeah, and uh, potting six goals against the Buffaloes, uh, not getting as many shots that time around, but going into that 6-3 uh, when for Prairie Hockey Academy, Keen Reed was in the pipes once again for the Buffalo, stopping 25 shots on uh, 31 against. But uh, for Prairie Hockey Academy, uh, for them to be able to find the net more in that game, uh, what do you think that came down to for them in that game? Uh, you know, a bit a bit tough to say exactly what it was since we weren't able to, to watch any of these games on the network this past weekend. Yeah, like you said, hard to say exactly because we didn't get a chance to watch. But uh, just kind of going off of uh, their Saturday night game where they're able to get 40-plus uh, shots, uh, coming into that Sunday game, you know, they're going to be uh, looking to continue. Uh, you know they would have been looking to continue uh, offensively and really pressuring the goaltender and, uh, you know, Eventually, you take enough shots, the floodgates are going to open. You're going to get uh, get goals eventually, and that seems to be uh, what maybe had happened on that Sunday night affair. Just uh, once they, they were able to uh, kind of do the opposite of what they did on Saturday. Instead of having the quantity of shots, they had more of the uh, quality shots and uh, were able to capitalize on the, the quality that they had. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just looking at it, some big performances from defensemen offensively for Prairie Hockey Academy in that game. Two goals from defenseman number 10, Cohen Friesen, as well as a goal from another defenseman in Mikhail Buds. Uh, when a team's able to, to get offense like that from the back end, for them to step up by uh, scoring uh, three of the team's six goals. Uh, you know, Prairie Hockey Academy definitely has to be uh, very pleased with the performances they got from those two players and uh, Buds and Friesen on the back end, generating that offense, generating goals. Yeah, definitely. When you can get uh, offense from your defenseman, uh, you know, that's, that's huge because uh, when you can have, engage your defensemen 
in the play. Uh, it definitely opens an extra couple outlets for the forwards. Uh, you know, when they do stop up on the half wall, they can look to go back. Uh, if you're more of a strictly defensive guy, uh, your forward probably aren't necessarily going to uh, have that first, that pass to the back uh, mentality. But when you do have uh, defensemen who are able to uh, get shots through and able to uh, get it to the net and kind of create some rebounds, that's definitely uh, a huge part of uh, a successful team is when you can engage your defensemen in the offense. And before we move on from these two teams, uh, just talking about Prairie one more time, uh, you know, not only one goal score in that game, but uh, five different players getting on the board. Uh, Noah Thal with a goal and one assist. Uh, Caleb Dewar had a goal in that game, as well as, like we mentioned before, uh, like I mentioned before, Cohen Friesen with two goals. Uh, Mikel Butts with, uh, or Mikel Butts with a goal as well. And uh, Aaron Osberg as well, getting a goal and two assists in that game. Uh, just talking about it, when you're able to get depth from throughout the lineup in terms of scoring, just how difficult that makes it on teams to, you know, not only key on on one player, but many players on the team. Yeah, defensively, when uh, you're going up against a team that has multiple offensive threats, uh, it definitely... Uh, as a, for the coaches, you're definitely going to have to, uh, you know, just put out your guys uh, a bit differently. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit hard to match lines when uh, you, you are going up against a team that kind of has uh, some depth guys who are able to put the puck on the net and, or at least generate uh, offensive chances. It sometimes makes it harder for the coaches to get the right defensive matchups and offensive matchups uh, in those games. Now, moving away from uh, academy hockey, talking about AAA hockey, going over to uh, the province of Saskatchewan and the Saskatchewan Female U18 AAA Hockey League. Two games were played this weekend by the Swift Current Wildcats and the Battleford Sharks. Uh, they split the weekend series as the Swift Current Wildcats won that first game of the weekend, 6 to nothing. then Battleford's winning the uh, final game of the weekend against them, 3-2. to two. Starting off with that 6 to nothing win, from the uh, Swift Current Wildcats, uh, out shooting this team heavily, uh, forty-one to twenty-five were the shots in that game for them. And Swift Current had to be pleased with just how, how many opportunities, how many chances they had on that, of course, uh, generating six goals out of those forty-one shots. Yeah, uh, when you are able to generate, uh, when you have that many shots, you definitely uh, feel good. You feel like uh, you just roll all four lines or all all lines out there because you know everybody's going or everybody's firing in all cylinders in games like that where uh you know everything just seems like it's you know going to the right spots and uh the offense is just go clicking on all cylinders definitely makes it easier uh for the coaches and the players to uh you know go into those games when you are able to take control and it's not like uh, Battlefords didn't have their chances in this game, especially on the power play. Uh, they had six chances, uh, zero for six on the power play. Of course, Swift Current was one for two on their power play. But talking about Battlefords on the power play, just uh, how, how huge it was for Swift Current to be able to, to shut them down six times, how huge it was for them to get that uh, strength, that strong play from their penalty kill against Battlefords in that game. Yeah, when you uh, when you're going to the penalty kill that many times, uh, you usually don't expect to be able to uh, put up a goose egg on uh, for the other team, which uh, that um, which was the the point there. Uh, Swift Current just had a an amazing penalty kill, and uh, you know I, I can all but guess that with that strong power play, uh, they were able to generate some momentum and uh, kind of help them get some of their offense going when uh, when their defensive play and their goaltending is so strong that they're able to uh, stop every power play that they the other team was putting forth to them. Now, uh, big performances in that game offensively for Swift Kern by Ava Metzger with two goals as well as uh... – Lakin Swan with two goals for herself, uh, three assists coming from 
Samantha Thompson, but talking about it when you're able to see your players like that step up for Swift Current in this game against, you know, although be it a, uh, a weaker team in the standings than Battleford, it's just huge to see, you know, players having big games like that for them to build their confidence. Uh, Jersey with Tane as well, having a goal and two assists in that game. Yeah, two two players specifically that I, I know I've kind of, uh, dialed in on that Swift Current team is Ava Metzger and uh, you said Jersey McCain. Uh, they're definitely two of the uh, more offensive players on that team. And uh, most of the time when uh, when those two are going, uh, so goes the team. Uh, you know, when, when Ava is able to put up points, uh, Swift Current definitely has a, a good chance at uh, take, pulling out the win on those games. And rookie goaltender got the start in that game for the Wildcats. And uh, Carly Leonard, he had uh, 25 saves on uh, all 25 shots. Just, uh, you know, the impressiveness of her game so far this season to be able to be, uh, you know, arguably the best goaltender on this team for Swift Current this season so far. Yeah, definitely. When uh, you're in your rookie season, you're able to pick up uh, a shutout. That's definitely, uh, uh, that's nothing to scoff at. Uh, anytime a goaltender gets a, a shutout, that is uh, a huge accomplishment. And uh, definitely uh, you can take the pride in the fact that they were a huge part in that game uh, when they are able to put up uh, as, as goose egg for the other team. Now, diving into Sunday's matchup, Cody, uh, not the way that Swift Current wanted it to go. 3-2 uh, to two loss for them on Sunday. They outshot the uh, Battleford Sharks once again, 37-22, to 22, but it was the huge performance from Emma Bachman that uh, really was the difference in that game, I feel like. 35 saves on 37 shots against. Uh, she's been phenomenal all season long. You just look at her numbers, they've been outstanding. But uh, talk about just how huge that performance was from Emma Bachman in that game to get her team to win uh, against uh, the Swift Current Wildcats on Sunday to close out their weekend. Yeah, especially in those low-scoring games, you know, those 2-1, uh, 2-2, those close games like that where they're kind of low-scoring, uh, those are definitely the ones where uh, you look to your goaltender as a leader in those games. And uh, that's definitely something Emma was able to do, uh, was kind of be that backbone uh, for for her team. And uh, uh, you can all – I can guess that uh, – with her uh, ex uh, great performance that will have given uh, her team a bit of momentum able to see make them able to see uh, that you know they can leave the the def- oh you can almost leave the defensive game to the the goaltender when uh, they're having a great game like that and then you can almost focus a bit more on the offensive uh, when you know that a goaltender is having a, a great game as Emma did and yeah, uh, this game for the Sharks feel like they were opportunistic. Of course, getting out shot quite a bit in this game, thirty-seven to twenty-two. But it was in that second period that was really the difference. As Battleford's got two unanswered goals after being down one to nothing uh, after that first period. Just how huge it was for this team to be able to get those two unanswered goals in that second period. That uh, really on the score sheet ended up being the difference in that game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when you're able to generate a bit of momentum and and get a bit of a uh, 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 in, in a bit of a groove as they were uh, with getting too an- unanswered, that uh, definitely uh, fares well in the game when you're able to uh, get a string of or a sequence of of goals in and able to put uh, one, two, three in a row up. Uh, most times you're going to be able to pull out the win in those games when you are able to uh, string together a number of goals in a sequence. Now, another difference for this Battleford's team was their ability to shut the Swift Current team down 
on the power play, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it was just uh, unbelievable performances on all four of those by uh, Emma Backman or if the, the penalty kill was, you know, really making it difficult on Swift Current. But from the game before when Swift only got two power plays, uh, they went one for two to them going 0 for 4, just how huge it was, how big of a difference that was for the Sharks to be able to kill off all four power plays, making the Wildcats go 0 for 4 on the girl advantage. Yeah, we had kind of alluded to it before uh, when talking about, uh, I believe, the uh, penalty kill of Brandon. That, uh, you know, when you're able to uh, shut shut down the special teams, that's definitely a, a huge momentum booster for, uh, for your team when you're able to, you know, uh, kind of eliminate the man advantage from being a factor in the game uh, that definitely bodes well for you and because uh, when, when you have when you're able to have that extra player it, it definitely is a huge uh advantage to to the team on the power play but uh with a strong penalty kill uh you know that you can generate a whole lot of uh momentum off of that one more thing for the Sharks, and then we'll uh, go to another commercial break here before talking about the, the next game, the final game we're going to talk about. But uh, players like Michaela Palapau uh, having a goal in that game, uh, Meadow Nordell having a goal as well, and uh, as well as, let me see here, Martin uh, Morelli having uh, the other goal for this team. For these players to, to take advantage of their opportunities, you know, take advantage of being opportunistic out there just by looking at the shots, you'd have to think this Battleford team was opportunistic in that game with their opportunities, uh, how huge it was for those players to step up and uh, put that puck in the back of the net on Aurora Van Warmer in that game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when when you're able to capitalize on uh, the few shots that you do get with them kind of trailing by a fair amount in that Sunday game, uh, you can definitely – tell that they were like you said opportun opportunistic uh able to uh maybe instead of putting every shot on net maybe waiting for that perfect shot and sometimes you're able to uh you know wait for the quality of sh and and focus on quality shots rather than the quantity uh other games you, you know you need to depend on uh throwing everything at a hot goal te goaltender and uh, hope that, you know, one or two squeak by. Uh, that wasn't the case. They were uh, able to, you know, with, with the fewer shots they were able to get towards the net, uh, were able to capitalize on the, the shots they did get. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, an impressive win for uh, the Sharks, taking down the Swift Current Wildcats, uh, who have now moved into a uh, first place tie in the league after the past weekend of games in the past week of games that they had a uh, week slash weekend of games. We'll, we'll call it that. We'll, we'll go with that, Cody. Yeah. You know, coming up after the commercial break we're going to talk about the Pemina Valley Hawks huge 6-2 win over one of the top teams in the MFHL the Yellowhead Chiefs coming up here on Off the Wall with Cody on Coffee with Graham stick with me and Cody after this commercial break. Welcome to Pilot Mount Hockey Academy your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena Home of the Buffalo is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically in a professional environment. Welcome back to Off the Wall with Cody here on this edition of Coffee with Graham with ASTD Productions color commentator Cody Wall. Uh, Cody, we've broken down a lot of games so far. Well, you have broken down a lot of games so far out of the teams that uh, played here 
on the network this past weekend, uh, as well as talking about two games that happened uh, last week on Wednesday and Thursday. Now we move into the final game that was shown here on the network on the weekend. The only game that uh, our Manitoba crew was able to get out to um, the Pemba Valley Hawks taking down the Yellowhead Chiefs 6-2 to two and a huge win for them. A uh, huge boost of confidence for Pemba Valley after uh, losing the, the day before against Central Plains 3 to nothing. Just how huge this is going to be for this group heading into the uh, you know upcoming games in this season, being able to take down uh, one of the top teams in the league in the Yellowhead Chiefs. Yeah, Pembroke Valley definitely, uh, they've been firing in all cylinders lately from what we've seen. Uh, I know they did uh, manage to, on Saturday, they didn't have a, a didn't have the same result that they would have wanted uh, when they faced Central Plains, but uh, definitely when they uh, faced Yellowhead there, uh, they definitely were able to generate a lot of offense with, uh, you said, six goals. Uh, and, you know, uh, one of the players that, you know, from what I had seen that was dominant uh, was Abby Bordigui. Uh She's always one of the the players that is generating a lot of offense for the the Hawks. Uh, she's usually right in the middle uh, uh, of everything that uh, the Hawks are doing when it uh, when it comes to game day. Yeah, and, uh, you know, looking at this game, uh, Yellowhead ended up out shooting them. Uh, you know, at points, they uh, controlled the play quite a bit. But it was that third period, Cody, that really was the difference in this game for Pemna Valley, scoring four unanswered, just uh, being able to come out, uh, especially after last time when these two teams played, uh, of course, tied going into the second period in that game earlier on in the season, 3-3 three to three in Yellowhead, pulling through 5-3 uh, to three in that game this time, 2-2 uh, two to two coming into that third period, and then ended up being 6-2 to two for the Pemina Valley Hawks. Just point to, you know, what you thought was the difference this time around for this Hawks team to, to be able to come out in that third period and execute like they did rather than it being the other way around. Yeah, it definitely looked like they came out of that third period firing all cylinders and just really uh, seemed like they wanted it more. Uh, not to say that Yellowhead didn't want uh, the win, but just uh, the tenacity from the Hawks and just the the constant effort uh, that they were able to put forth uh, and just kind of continually uh, pressure Yellowhead. Uh, that, to me, I think was the difference maker uh, for them. And, uh, you know, we talk about this girl quite a bit, Quinn McLaren, the captain of this team. She was back in the lineup this weekend. Uh, you know, I, I had a chance to speak to her earlier on. Uh, you know, not earlier on, but on Thursday on Coffee with Graham on the first ever edition of a new segment called the Hawks Report, uh, just saying that she was, uh, she got winded on that play, felt like they just took her out for precautionary reasons, but for her to be back and for her to have a game like she did, uh, you know, getting it done in the offensive goal, in the offensive zone by scoring a goal, uh, as well as getting it done in the defensive zone, transitioning the puck up the ice very well, making good plays with her stick, uh, playing good defense out there, how huge it was for them to have their captain back uh, this weekend, and not only this weekend, but her huge performance in that game uh, in all areas against Yellowhead. Yeah, I'm going to start off by saying I, I'm glad to see that uh, Quinn was able to uh, not go down for an extended period of time after that a uh, nasty play in that exhibition game that we had called uh, the other day. Uh, nice to see that she was only winded and kind of taken out of that game for precautionary reasons. But, uh, you know, she is somebody that the Hawks uh, depend on uh, very often, you know, able to uh, generate momentum through her leadership. Uh, she's able to uh, create offense with good, clean passes and uh, is always an outlet on that uh, for a point shot uh, when it does come to the offensive zone. So it's just really kind of an all, uh, the whole package for uh, a defenseman, I would say. Yeah, 
And uh, you know what? Moving away from Quinn McLaren, just this uh, Pembroke Valley Hawks team, their their ability to you know really generate their chances on the four check using their speed. That was a huge part of why they were scoring their goals. Just the four check in their speed in that game, but as well as in that second period, getting into lanes and blocking shots. Just how huge that performance was from that Pembroke Valley team all around in that game against uh, Yellowhead in those areas. Uh, on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. They're, uh, they're always moving their feet. You know, you don't really see them uh, standing still. Uh, you know, they got some, some people who can really move uh, once they get the puck, like uh, Janique Grenier, um, Abby Bordedwee, she's got some wheels on her. Um, you know, the list goes on uh, for Ava Del Bozic. She's another player who uh, when she's able to turn on the Jets, she can put some separation between her and uh, the defenders. And uh, they definitely have a, a very quick team, like you said, Graham. Yeah, and uh, let's dive into Abby Bordedwee. What a performance. Uh, that first uh, point she got in that game, uh, you know, looking like she was going to shoot, looking like she was going to shoot as she was, you know, using her eyes to look at the net, fake that shot. Uh, she did end up finding Quinn McLaren uh, back door right on the uh, right at the side of the net and she tapped it in. Uh, Abby Board we also scoring a beautiful backhander where it looked like she had no room to put that puck in and as well as going to those right places to receive the puck off of that a good four check from the Hawks uh, being able to you know force turnovers taking that puck away and finding her in the slot for those goals just talking about that overall performance from Abby boarded we actually yeah also is the league leader in points at this point in the season as well yeah she's definitely able to create a lot of offense through her quick feet uh but also once she gets to the offensive zone she does have uh, a great hockey IQ to stop up and uh, be able to cradle the puck and wait for a play to develop and uh, is able to really uh, make good clean passes to her teammates to uh, put them in good offensive uh, positions as well. Let's uh, talk about Trianne's now. Uh, fantastic in this game. Only two shots beat her. She uh, faced the, the bulk of the shots as uh, Pembroke Valley ended up getting outshot. But Trianne's uh, definitely a performance. They, uh, the Hawks left to see out of their goaltender in that game against Yellowhead. Yeah, definitely. And uh, like we've seen Tria a couple times and she's always, uh, you know, she doesn't put forward a, a bad performance. You know, she rarely has a bad game really uh, is always kicking uh, kicking and able to uh, bring a lot of the rebounds in. Doesn't uh, give a lot of extra garbage for uh, her opponents when she's in net and able to, uh, like I said, suck up a lot of the, the shots and not give off uh, a lot of rebounds. You know, uh, talking about uh, the special teams now, both teams had a lot of opportunity on the power play. Both of these teams ended up having power play goals coming in that uh, first period. I'm forgetting what happened in the third if uh, those goals came on the power play for Pemina Valley. But just looking back at the first period, especially uh, both of these teams capitalizing on the power play, uh, just how huge it was for these teams to be able to have some success on the power play and get some goals off there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when you can get your special teams uh, going, that's definitely a positive. Uh, that's the, often something uh, coaches will want to work on uh, is special teams, making sure uh, that when you do get on the man, man advantage, you're able to generate uh, some momentum. Even if you're not able to score all the time, uh, just generating some momentum is huge. And uh, when it comes to the penalty kill, uh, you know, that's another important part that you never, uh, on the flip side, you never want to get down in the game. So you always want to have a strong penalty kill, uh, able to kill off the majority of the opportunities that you give the opponents. And, uh, you know, you like to, to kill, have a, a strong, a real strong kill uh, to be able to be a successful team. Talking about uh, the Yellow Edge Chiefs here, uh, we'll, we'll touch on them uh you know, a bit here to, to end off this week's seg this week's segment, but 
you know, looking at them, they did some good things in this game, uh, obviously having a rough third period. But from what you saw, what you liked from what you saw from this Yellowhead Chiefs team, as well as what you didn't like from what you saw from this team. Yeah, definitely looking at the score, it wouldn't be indicative of uh, the performance that Yellowhead had put forward. You know, them. Uh, you had mentioned that they were tied going into that third period. That's definitely a positive, uh, you know, a, a close game until that uh, third period. Just something uh, they'll maybe want to work on putting forward a full 60-minute effort. Uh, you never want to get uh, blown out in a game, and uh, especially in a period as well. You know, with kind of, uh, you know, you break that game into segments the first two periods they come out tied uh and kind of a like you said a bit of a maybe a poorer poorer uh third period where they had lost kind of uh four nothing if you were to break it down uh that's definitely something they'd want to uh work on and uh improve on a bit going forward is just putting forth a full uh 60 minute effort yeah, and in that third period, uh, once they got down Yellowhead and once that four-check really came to life for Pemina Valley, it seemed like this Yellowhead Chiefs team kind of panicked with the puck a bit more, started uh, giving the puck away uh, a bit more, weren't as uh, clean with their passing, weren't as patient with, you know, trying to make their passes, and just really kind of a bit panicky after uh, Pemina Valley started to impose their will on the four check, but you know, talking about the four check for Yellowhead, something that was really strong for them in that game, really something that was forcing turnovers for on the Pemina Valley side of things at points in this game. Yeah, definitely uh, a strong defensive play at points in that game. Uh, you know, maybe a little, like we said, a little bit of a breakdown in the third period, but uh, you know, before that, definitely uh, we were able to. Uh, play good, sound defensive hockey, able to uh, get their sticks in lanes, able to break up uh, plays and passes, and uh, really put some pressure on Pemina Valley to uh, really amp it up going into that third period with uh, their strong defensive play and kind of keeping it uh, even keel. Now, uh, Yellowhead came into that game as one of the top teams in the league they are still one of the top teams in the mfhl just looking at the standings right now cody uh just waiting for my computer to load uh the standings here uh yellowhead is uh i believe they are still at yep still at nine and two on the season uh, yeah, that's what the record updated to. But uh, after coming into that game, after having a 6-1 win the day before against Eastman, uh, maybe, you know, they, uh, you know, losing a game like this against Pemina Valley, a team that is below them in the standings, a team that they won earlier against in the season, definitely uh, that third period, especially uh, them not being able to finish that game, definitely a wake-up call for this group in Yellowhead. Yeah, definitely uh, bringing it back. Both teams having uh, games on Saturday with uh, Pemina Valley dropping their game to Central Plains. You, you can uh, assume that, you know, there's a bit of a bitter taste coming out of that game. You know, being a close uh, close game to Central Plains, you know, losing a close one, uh, maybe had a little extra momentum coming into that Sunday night game. And for uh, the Yellowhead, Chief, or Yellowhead uh, they come into that game off coming off of a, a, a nice win and maybe uh, you know maybe almost took their opponents for granted uh, to some extent and uh, maybe uh, part of the reason why they weren't able to put together a full 60 minute effort to uh, to you know kind of keep up with the Hawks in that Sunday night game Sunday Sunday afternoon game. Yeah, I feel like uh, it was just in that third period where, where the, the wheels kind of fell off for Yellowhead. Like I, I mentioned before from what I saw, just kind of breaking it down more because you weren't really able to watch that game, Cody, uh, as, as you were in the middle of your move, right, uh, this past weekend. Uh, it was just that forecheck, that energy that Pemina Valley came out with and brought them uh, really 
uh, generating momentum for themselves, and Yellowhead really can can recover in that game after that momentum was shown by the Hawks on the forecheck in that offensive zone, putting that puck in the back of the net off of that strong forecheck and that speed that they were showing. And Yellowhead, even though they did have their chances to, to score in that period, uh, Trey Enns was absolutely phenomenal in that game. Cody Wall on this edition of his segment here on Copy with Graham. Off the Wall with Cody joining me on this Monday evening on his segment. Cody, you take care. Uh, continue to stay safe out there. And uh, we'll see you at some point in the future, man. We'll see you next week on your segment. Off the Wall All right. With Cody. On and again, show. thanks for having me on today, Graham. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, to join your show, Coffee with Graham. Ah, no problem, Cody. You take care and stay safe, eh? Talk to you later.